we'll get right into it. Um, first of all, I want to say this. Anybody that don't feel like you need to be involved in this situation, don't be involved in this situation. You got a lot of people that's leaving comments saying, uh, I wouldn't be doing this and I wouldn't. This ain't you. This ain't you. This ain't your life. There's a reason why I'm on here. And don't forget that I'm on YouTube. Don't forget that. I'm on YouTube. Don't forget that. And you don't have to be a subscriber on this channel. You do not have to support anything that I'm doing. I don't care that you this is a this is a family issue but then again it's an issue that is uh that was made to become a public issue once donations started coming in okay which was one of the reasons why i did not want to participate in anything at all i didn't want to have anything to do with this social this this aspect of my life being social media moreover bigo but since my brother was a character on bigo and one of the main characters on bigo you have an influx of a lot of people coming on here from bigo but they're coming on here from bigo i just want you to understand that so you don't have to indulge Anyone who feels the need that they are uber sensitive, considering that if you take, for instance, all the things that my brother has done on that platform and how he how I was even introduced on the platform. Nobody seemed to be that sensitive towards him when he was speaking. Some of the things that he said about me on there. So I'm highly offended that people say, well, oh, if Keith was here. We would we we wouldn't know you right. You right, but you sound stupid. Know why? Because there was a tragedy. There was a tragic accident, right? That got all the family members involved with this situation to a certain degree. Now, I myself. If you go back into my videos and if you actually watch my videos and some of the things that I have said from the very beginning, I said that I didn't want to be a part of it. I thought it was something that the family could have took care of on its own. We didn't have to. And even why Miss Regina is coming out here and speaking on family matters. She stated on several different occasions early on that she wanted this to be a private matter. I showed the video. I showed the video. She made it public. She made it a op versus a uh, uh, ops uh, uh, church or congregation or whatever against all this uh, other stuff. When she came out here and chose a side, and she chose Tommy's side, which we know Tommy has flip flop as well. One time she was in the church. She couldn't stand dealing with the, the 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 politics of the church, so she decided to go against everybody that was in the in Keith's family, basically. Yep, yeah, you're right, TV killer. We didn't have this this. See this 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 what I be saying. It's like a lot of selective outrage. Because Keith did, let's let's be real about this. Keith dragged me, Keith dragged my mom. So now everybody is so super uber sensitive now. Oh, we don't want to talk about this. No, we didn't make this a topic. Because the people that's coming out and speaking against me or have an attitude towards me at this point in time are referring to the video that my brother put out back in uh 20 what 2020 about the bike so let's not make that a let, let a lot of people are going they are living vicariously through a four-year-old video almost four-year-old video that my brother did that dragged me 
So now I come out here and I'm on the de- I'm on the defensive, basically, because I'm doing something that I didn't want to do. I didn't want to be on social media. I didn't want to have anything to do with none of this stuff. So if if it hurts you and you butt hurt about me coming out here and speaking out against some of the things that's going on. I'm sorry you feel that way. Don't come to this platform. Don't, if you offended by anything that I'm saying against the powers that be, don't, don't, don't come here. That's all I can say. Because I'm going to certainly speak out against this stuff that's going on. And I think anyone would. And not only speak out against it, but deal with it from a legal aspect too. There's a lot of things going on that a lot of people don't know anything about. And I haven't spoken on a lot of things. And I did not, for a whole period of time, for a whole period of time, I did not say nothing at all. I stopped saying when that's why and when you look at my when you look at my um the the money that 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 I made online it started to dwindle down in January and February into March because it wasn't that much that it wasn't nothing being said at that time. It wasn't a lot of stuff being said from the other side, but then Tommy came out again. And so I addressed what she said again. But we know this whole thing is orchestrated. When it comes to Bigo, there is only one thing that my mom could be invested in with Tommy K. A lot of people missing this. The only thing that my mother can be involved with Tommy K in is with money. That's it. They don't know each other. They're not related. Tommy K does not know Keith like she's trying to come out here and act like she 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 does. Right. My mom does not have a job. So she's totally being supported by whatever proceeds is coming from Pastor P81 because she certainly ain't giving that money to none of his kids. And she came out here and told everybody that she was not going to do do anything for baby mama. She wasn't going to do nothing for none of the kids except for Kalino and her son. Now her story has changed all of a sudden. And I think somebody needs to come out and address it. And because I'm Keith's only brother by my mother and I know the things that she is doing. And I'm highlighting the things that she's doing because she didn't come out here and attack uh none of these other people and speak personal things about uh, and most of the stuff that she's saying is not most everything that she's basically everything that she said she's lying on that video everything that i said i proved i got receipts to everything that i said i got receipts to and oh why is she sitting up here talking he didn't see keith when i described what he had on Mom, he had on a black do-rag. He was sitting on your passenger side car. And Uncle Pooh handed him the weed and you knew it. You lied. When you was talking about the weed, a lot of people, when I heard the breakdown from um, Nomi, she was right. You said it was two different situations that you included as one. She was right on point. You included two different things, two different situations. You said that he somebody was trying to give him something to smoke and he he you drove off. You he told you to drive off. Well, y'all didn't drive off. You was sit, you would y'all was he was sitting on the passenger side of the car with the door open. Kalino was out there. You was out there. Uncle Kirk was out there. Uncle Buki was out here. And you saying that I didn't see it. I saw it. You just don't know how. I saw Keith. You don't know how. 
And if Keith is playing spades and uh, playing dominoes and doing all this stuff, why you can't show Keith? If you're going up and down the stairs and all this, why can't nobody see Keith? That's what I don't understand. Like, why can't nobody see Keith? Why are you going through all these things to try to keep Keith from being, and you showed him on his birthday. He looked a lot better on his birthday than he do did just recently to me. Then you got a man that's not even credible. He coming out here, he lying. He's lying for you because there is no way he can know about Keith's progress if, Keith, if he wasn't even around. He wasn't even around at the beginning stages of what was going on with Keith. Keith was doing a lot better when Ghost was there, when Shay was there, point blank, period. He was doing a lot better. I don't care what you coming out here trying to say, and over time, he should heal to some degree. It should be some healing. You took the trachea out of his throat. He able to eat solid foods. No. Over time, that would happen. So I'm going to clean up this mess that you put in, uh, included with my wife, which I think is totally disrespectful for somebody to come out here and speak about somebody's uh, wife that ain't said nothing that you tried to create a scenario where this woman said that uh, you you tried to say that she said that it was something about uh, us being touched on or something. That woman never said nothing like that. Noni said it. She never said nothing like that. You came out here and lied just so you can spew that garbage out and say that this woman was sexually assaulted on live. You got out here just to get this shit started and you don't know how this affects people because you don't give a good goddamn and you not, she not going to hurt me. She can do anything she can, but she not going to hurt me. What she going to do is get hurt in the long run because this shit ain't going to last. It's not. You lied on this woman. You told these people that this woman, my wife, called you and, and told you that uh, I assaulted my daughter. How could she say that? How... This is what I don't understand. Why are you making up these stories? You know damn well, I could, you know damn well that that woman did not ever call you until you call her the next morning. Now, this is what kills me. And I'm going to put this out later because y'all know I always keep receipts to this shit. I'm the king round here. I'm the receipt king around here. I got the receipts to this whole situation. Listen, this woman said that my wife called her the next morning and told her that my, my daughter had a swollen face. This is what she said. This is the lies that she make up. My wife never called this woman. And told her nothing. The next day she was on her way going somewhere. Hold on. Let me see. Hey, babe. Babe. Come here. Where baby at? No, come here. Uh, now listen to it. Now she said. Now this woman got on here and said. I won't. I want you to clear this up. Where was I when they when they called? When when she called CPS in January. This was in January. You was at work. I was at work, right? Mm -hmm. And so you called me that morning and you said what? That she called me. She called you, right? Mm -hmm. And she said what? Which part are you talking about? She called, she had been calling us the whole time, like questioning me 
about the kids and then she'd hang up for me and then call you and question you about the kids. Well, when was this? That's I'm talking about the day of the day when CPS came. Oh, she didn't call me until she I was on my way to do something. Yeah. And she said CPS is on their way to your house right now. So she told you that CPS, that's exactly what you told me, right? Yeah, she said. And so then you called me after she called you, right? Yep, Did she say that she was gonna call me there? Did she tell you that she was gonna because what she said is that you called her and told her that uh that my daughter had a swollen face. No, and then she called okay. she so what happened? Okay, so matter of fact, it was a Thursday because that Wednesday, remember, I had made greens and chicken and I made some cornbread. She had wanted me to go to that dance thing with her. Yeah, I it said, was Wednesday, I, said Wednesday I don't do dance, I'm a I'm a roller, I rolls. So she was like, um, well, you got to ask Delina. I said, I'm going to ask him anything. I said, I just don't want to go with you. She ended up coming over because they didn't have it or something. And we was already talking to her daughter or whatever. And then she came and just was sitting down. Yeah. I left. I was gone. I was gone the whole time. So I right. Because you went to happened. go pick up. I had to go get Yeah, yeah, yeah. You had to go get the yeah, baby. I had to go get her. So I don't even know what happened. Right. And then next thing I know, I came. She walked right out the door. And I'm looking. I don't know what was happening. No, she stayed there for a while. Because remember, she was she wanted to get some food. She stayed there for a minute. Remember, she stayed there for a minute. It's all on videotape. I just know, like I said, I wasn't here. And all I know is it wasn't enough food, but you told me I ain't make enough or something. Yeah. And then that's yeah. all I remember. And then she left at around she about left. 10 o'clock. And the next day, I didn't hear from her because she had been calling me that whole time. But then the next day, I didn't hear from her. And then she called me. It was about the afternoon time because I was on my way to go somewhere. And I turned right around. She was like, CPS, I'm with your house. I said, for real, Miss Regina, this is what you're doing. And then I turned around. I called you like your mom called CPS. And then I called her and I said, what you yeah, call? You, what you, you call her. Yeah. I said, what you call the CPS for? She hung up on me. She hung up. So CPS came. No. CPS came that same day. Right. Yeah. The next day, they the lady came the in lady the house. Came the next day. So we I got mean, that on the video same tape day, too. I'm sorry, the same day she, she came. So, so who did she talk to? Who did the CPS lady talk to? She talked to me because I was there. And she talked to us. The kids. She talked to all the kids. So she would be able to. Now this is the same day. Now she said that the baby had a swollen face. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, if she had, what what's the chances that? If a child was assaulted to the point to where they had a swollen face, that the swelling would go down and there wouldn't be a bruise in the in the in in less than a couple of hours. It would at least be a bruise because the dog likes me. So it would be a bruise. Was yeah, there any bruises her hands, on her? There was no bruise on her. Was there any swollen face on on her at all? No. So she made it all up. That's what I'm saying. She made it all up. And not only that, I got the paperwork. I'm going to put this online, too. It's the whole video. Yeah, I got the whole video. What she don't know is that we had the whole video of the whole thing. They were saying we locked so you got to ask yourself, why would, a, why would a mother do that? What would be the intentions behind? Not only this. Not only this. She called your ex and went over to your ex's house, right? Okay, so she Do she know him? She don't know him. She no, she don't know him at all. She said has, that. Ha, and this man has never he this man has never gone to the courts and said that I assaulted his daughter at all. Hold on, we're not even from here. She I don't have no time here. She said that I told her all this stuff and I didn't tell her. I don't even want nobody to know who my kids are, or where my kids live. She said I told her where they live and I yeah, told she her made all the whole stuff. thing up. I didn't tell her anything. She was very invasive and she tried to get information out of me, but I never told her that. Right. I don't know how it came out or whatever, but she went to my baby daddy's house talking about we need to you he need to get Brianna because you gonna no, be trying man. you gonna be trying to get her next, like you just beat everybody, yeah, yeah. And everybody supposed to be so. so not only did she make the complaint to CPS, but she actually went over to and knocked on everybody's door yeah. trying to find her baby daddy. And now, just did. think of how crazy that is. He called me yelling at me, talking about who is this bitch or whatever. Come yeah, we got house. and he we said, got that recording he said, too. He said, You got this bitch coming, who the fuck is this bitch coming to my house and all this other turn stuff? It, she's telling me not to do this. 
Yeah. He said that to me, and we we end up getting into it because he can He thought I told her to go over there, so we got into it, and I'm like, "What are you talking about?" So as soon as I got the phone with him, I called the police because that's too. I'm like, I told. Kevin, I said, your mom is doing way too much. I said yeah, that. Yeah, you was she's upset doing, about that. I said, she's going, like, I don't even know what I You was mad that. at me, basically, because you was like, what the fuck is she doing? Like, it just didn't make no sense. But but this is the presence. This is the kind of person that we're dealing with. That's why people don't understand why I'm doing what I'm doing. For me to get involved to this degree, it means that it's, it's a high alert situation, Right. And it's really something that's very important because when you think about your brother being in the situation that it, that's what he was expecting me to do. He was, he's expecting me to come and get him. That's what he, that's why he wants to see me because he knows that I'm the only person in the world who knows what kind of woman this is. She, he knows this. That's why he was mad that day when I left because it was my cousin that was there. My cousin was there when I went over the house the first time when I told everybody when I had the blue on and I told everybody that I saw Keith for the first time. Guess how I was, I was able to do that? Through the pressure that I was giving them applying on social media. That's when Player Kane came out. That's when all them other people came out and started speaking out against Miss Regina and it put the pressure on her to have to come up, have to do something. And it worked. It worked. Because if that, if I never would have said nothing, I probably wouldn't have never seen him that day either. And then she made it at that time. Of, like, she coming up here talking about this, this open door. That I've, I've had an open door for everybody to come. And nobody's coming. Do you know why? Because your son came and you closed the door in my face. You told me to get out because I didn't want to talk to you because I knew it would lead to more bullshit. And if I think they brilliant for not going over there. They brilliant for saying, I don't want to go over there because you know what? If you would do that to your own son, what would you, who are they? You already have great disdain for the, all these people that's close to Keith. You know why? And if you got problems with these people that Keith love, why wouldn't you have a problem with Keith? Because Keith loved those people that you coming out and blasting ghosts. Shay, you made this whole situation about you. Now you saying us as in you're doing this to your family. What family? You ain't good with everybody in the family. You ain't as good as you think you is. Nobody fucks with you like that. And the only reason why people are dealing with you is because they want to see Keith. And that's what everybody else been doing. And I'm telling you, it don't work. We have to have a clear, Keith has to get away from you. If Keith don't get away from you, nobody's going to see Keith. You was plotting and planning to move out of the state. But that was your whole desire. Keith don't want to be with you. Keith ain't got no choice right now. Because you took it upon yourself to put yourself in charge, intimidate them kids, put them out of the out of their dad's home, put people put other people in the home. Now you got this revelation from God. That you ain't do. I had to talk with God. You ain't had no talk. I hate niggas that come out here and say, I talk to God. How you talk to God? How do you? You ain't talk to no God. You ain't doing nothing that God say in his word. And you sitting up here talking about you talk to God. Ain't talk to none of you niggas. You don't do nothing he say. Nothing. Then you come on here taking the side of a woman that you don't even know. And the only reason why you talking to this woman is because of Pastor P81. 
and she ain't gonna miss no payment or she ain't gonna miss putting it out there because she know that you a slave to money. You the slave of money. What, 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 since I'm getting all this money, I showed you where all the money going. I showed you where all the money going. Just like y'all came up here. Well, I don't, I don't believe it. I don't believe what, well, at least I'm showing stuff. What did you sow? Nothing. Y'all ain't sold nothing the whole time. Not one receipt. I'm showing receipts. Go back in my videos. You will see all the receipts that I showed. I showed that I was talking on the phone when I got the on, on live. When my wife called me about the $350 on the, on the, on the cell phone and the phone bills. I was on live several times when they called and asked for something. And I gave my wife the phone and I told her, send it to him. Not only that, we had the child in our home. We never put that child out. That child did not want to listen. She decided that she wanted to do something and she left. Case closed. We ain't forcing nobody to stay that don't want to be here. If she don't want to be here because she want to do what she want to do, none of my kids have that freedom to do that. Why would I let somebody else do it? Or you... You just a Hebrew Israelite. No, it doesn't matter if I'm a Hebrew Israelite. It don't matter if I'm a Christian. It don't matter if I'm a Buddhist. It don't matter what I am. A home is a home with rules. What the fuck do you have parents for if you just don't let your kids do whatever the hell they want to do? And my kids don't do what they want to do. Not in my home. And no kid will come in my home and do what the hell they want to do. Or they don't believe in the Hebrew. It, it don't matter what they believe in. Nothing. And I think that people would take the necessary precautionary measures to raise their kids with some kind of morals. Because a lot of these kids ain't got no morals as they ain't got no rule, no morals or nothing. We had kids leave here solely because they didn't, they just didn't want to follow the rules. And then when they go out, guess what? They ain't going to school. They got bad grades. They ain't doing nothing. All the kids in my home are active in extracurricular activities, involved in sporting events. They have a healthy social life outside of social media. And they all getting good grades. Mission accomplished. They getting fed. They getting clothed. They clothes is getting washed. What more do you expect from a parent? Why do I have to interview anybody? This ain't about them. This is about Keith. This ain't about you. You you the one coming out here isolating this man from his family. You the one that kidnapped Keith. You have. Ain't nothing normal about this situation. Everybody that's donating need to know the shit that you doing. All you doing this for it, all you doing it for is the money. This is definitely not a money grab for me. For my wife to be um slandered like this, for my personal life to be brought back up, do you think that's worth uh the money any monetary compensation? No. For me to be involved in something that I don't, in a, an environment that I don't agree with, no. I'm doing this for Keith. I'm doing this for the people who really support Keith and is interested. I ain't, I ain't, I don't, I don't care about no ops. This ain't Bigo. Why are you trying to play Bigo in real life, Keith? When Keith said it was a separation between the two. Why are you his mom talking about ops? Why is you his mom and you talking about uh you messing with the ops? You don't even know who a op is. You don't even know what you're talking about. But you know who that's coming from? Tommy K. That's where it's coming from. Tommy K been talking that op shit. How Endo don't know nothing about, he don't know nothing about Brandon and 
Claire Kane and none of these people that my brother had problems with, yeah, they don't, or or what whatever. He don't know nothing about that. We his real family. We don't know nothing. We don't why do we why we go get involved? We wasn't involved in all the years. Nobody had a problem with that. Nobody said, Well, where Kevin at when he got shot at? No, everybody, where was you at? Where, where was I at? He got other family members that live here. I don't know the shit that keep being in the streets. That's not none of my business. Why am I going to sit up here and talk about something? I don't know who, who, I don't know. I wasn't there. I ain't getting on live and talking crazy to people and doing all this stuff. I don't do a talk about people's kids and all this stuff. I don't know. It's consequences that come with that stuff. But you, everybody cheered it on until it was time for you to get out there and do what you was watching me while you ain't do nothing. Why you ain't come out? That's my bigger thing. You say you his supporter. You say that that's your pastor. Why you wasn't here? Tote no guns. That's what I want to know. That's new, new and Tommy. That's definitely new, new and Tommy over there telling, feeding her that, that trash. And it ain't all just them. Because she wicked, she been wicked, and she gonna continue to be wicked. Nobody wants to think that there is a mother like Regina out here, but it is. It is. It's mothers out here like this. I've spoken to many people who have said, man, my mom just like that. I can't talk to my mom. I can't do this. Listen, it ain't worked in years. Do you think it's gonna work after uh, accident with my brother we was me and my mother was not on good terms when i came to that hospital we was not on good terms she lied to the cps she caught she called this man and she still i'm glad she came out here and talked about the stuff that she said when she's talked about my wife because that made that validated the fact that she's still talking to her bitter ex She's still talking to him. She don't know nothing about my wife to be speaking about. And the shit that she came up with, oh, she was talking about this. And she, she, my, my wife has never said none of the shit that she said. My wife has never said any of that shit that my mom came out here and tried to lie about and say that she said. She didn't say none of that shit. She been just like she go after Shay. Now, her and Shay used to be real close. Real close. And the only reason why she attacked Shay because Shay is what she is to Keith. And she always wanted to be involved in that situation. She was mad when she got some shoes. Matt, what whatever it is that Shay got, she was upset about it. Now she gets to spew out all her hate, and she got Keith as a control mechanism. She has power over Keith as a control, just like a Jezebel. A Jezebel attaches to their themselves to someone who has major influence that is pretty prestigious, and they suck the power from them to utilize the power for themselves to subvert everyone else. That's what they do. That's what the Jezebel spirit is. She know now look at what she do. She deprive his kids of seeing him. Don't want his brother around. Don't want his friend around. Don't want his woman around. I got to get rid of her. I just got to get rid of her. What mother is that invested in somebody's lover? Who would want their mother being that invested in their lover to control whether or not they see him, especially when she got a problem? That's why she tried to cover it up by saying, yeah, we was initially we was cool until. Oh, no, you wasn't cool. You got that Tommy K syndrome. You cool. So you until you find something so you can push everybody else out the way and put 
push your authority out here and say, I'm the one. I'm that bitch. I'm her. That's exactly what, yeah, and that's why I said two cannot walk together unless they agree. That's what the Bible say. So just how Tommy K is, they, they're feeding off one another's power. But the power really is in Keith because if they don't have Keith, then they don't have no power. Tommy K won't have no supporters if she went against Keith. She's not going, that's why she, P said, P always said this, P always said that. That's what she do. There wasn't, there was no problem with me and my my uh brother when we went fishing. There was no problem between me and my that is a flat, fat face lie. I even text messaged him that day because I was supposed to go with him that day. I just didn't get up. And I was hoping that he didn't call me. And when I called him, he told me that he was on live and he would call me back. I texted him at first and then I called him. We didn't have no problem out there. Ghost did not say that. She made up a whole lie on Ghost. She got to make up lies. And see, when you got to make up lies, you know you're wrong. You know you're wrong when you got to make up lies. That's all she's doing is making up lies. Case in point. If anybody know he his brother's keeper, why are you putting him on social media? Mm -hmm. Why are you exposing the whole family? Why are you... The only now it's the family, now that you think that you got in good with the family, which you're not good with, with none of the family. You're not good. You may have talked to two people and now y'all back on good terms a little bit until you fall out once again with them and you find out the shit that they doing then you go uh really uh be mad again that's why they on pins and needle oh man don't say nothing to her because if you say something to her then we ain't gonna be able to see keith that that's exactly that's that's the kind of power that you don't need anytime you give a woman that kind of power go move in with a woman So I dare you go move in with a woman and get in a fight. I bet you she going to kick your ass out. Young men, get your own shit. Don't you ever get out here and because women is emotional. And when women get emotional and you do one thing wrong, you're going to have to pack your shit up. I didn't have plenty of garbage bags and had to do, I had to learn my lesson. Sleeping in my car and going through all that shit because I ain't come back on time or I ain't talking to you. So now you got to get the fuck up out of my house. No, I never put myself in that situation ever again. I'll have my own stuff. And of course, a man is supposed to have his own stuff anyway. You're supposed to have your own shit anyway. They laughing in the comment section, Harry by Kitty and Miss King. Y'all know y'all didn't threw a couple of niggas out. That's why you laughing so hard. Ain't no ain't no real woman going to respect no effeminate ass man. And you an effeminate ass man if you living with a female. A female is going to get mad at you and you're going to get mad you're you're going to get mad and you say the wrong thing. I guarantee she going to tell you to pack your shit and get the fuck out. I guarantee you did. Yes, you did. I know y'all did. I know you did. I would love to hear those stories. We gonna have we I'm gonna talk about that. We gonna talk about that. Crystal did. Who else did? Well, what I know y'all women did kick the bunch. I know y'all kicked the gang of niggas out. Now, this is what I want to ask, since y'all being truthful, since we having the truth ceremony right here now. Now, y'all want y'all to just briefly put in the comments, why did you kick him out? What'd he do? Look, love me, look. I have. Really, the man's supposed to have his own play. It is. He is. It's ridiculous, too. 
how it came to the man always moving in with the female. Yeah, a lot of people just ain't got their shit together now. Stayed out all night. See, I knew that was I knew that was gonna be the first one. Not respecting me. What he do? Left the toilet seat. Uh, I know he did. Got on my damn nerves. Oh, that's a good reason for you to pack your shit and get out. See, all emotional. This is something that we can fix. You can fix this respecting stuff. He ain't put the toilet seat down. Mine didn't want to help with. I knew that was coming. Mine didn't want to help with bills. I gave, I told my sons, have their own play. That's right. Cheating. Okay. Well, cheating, they, that's not going to be tolerable. Get your ass out. You ain't supposed to be cheating. Oh, ain't no double dipping. Now, you should know better than that. If you living with somebody, that's stupid. That's a stupid nigga. Don't do. If you go live with a woman, don't cheat. You ain't got no chance with that one. I'm going to say this. No, if you good in bed, you can come back two more times. You go come back two more. You good if you good in bed. If you ain't good in bed, if your game subpar, you ain't coming back. You go see somebody's bike out in the front. Her ex go be in the front. Somebody go be in the front. You go see it. Lawrence said, listen, oh, so he a mama's boy. Yeah, you got two more times, Crystal. You know it. Y'all know. Y'all didn't took a nigga back after they cheated. Don't lie. Don't you get up here and lie. A whole year he ain't get his stuff together? Y'all got to stop me messing with these prison pay pal people. You got to stop doing that. You might look up every once in a while with a prison pal or pal, whatever that is. You might look up. But there's a lot of hobosexuals out there. It ain't just a uh, 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 Don, Dan Trail, Don Trail, whatever. Yeah, pen pal. There you go. I don't know the nigga. It's a pen pal. You right. You might look up with a pen pal. My this girl that I work with, she had a pen pal. They they used to wear matching clothes and everything. See, see, she was working hard for that man. Married him in like 10 days. They got married. They was wearing the same clothes. She bought him shoes. I choose the wrong dudes. Yeah, I, I don't know what to say about that, Miss Jones. A lot of a lot of women choose the wrong dudes. They do. They do. Y'all laughing too hard out there. Only one he go to is the ones that buy into his. Uh, what he doing? <laughs> he is driven. She be losing words. He don't even be no. She don't, Miss Regina don't believe the stuff she's saying. Miss Regina just be saying stuff. She don't, she don't even believe the stuff that she be saying. Uh, uh, she act like I'm just, uh, what she act I, like? I'm TB Joshua or something. Like I'm, uh, how these people, all these people sedated with Kevin Jones. No, they, 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 they relate to the truth and receipts. Something that you ain't putting out. Now, if you put out some receipts and you told the truth, then you wouldn't have to worry about Pastor P81 struggling. You put out lies and inconsistencies. You 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 sitting up here talking about he what he he you didn't know that he was smoking weed. And when you look, you said, What? Who that story don't even sound right. That don't even sound right. You be, Lord have mercy. Let me get into this. Oh, the wrong things. He done found a way to make fast money, and that's what he do. What fast money? I always meet guys that I have more like, what the fuck? I always meet guys that I have more. 
You can smell it before you see it. Yep, you can. But what you mean? I always meet guys that I have more. Oh, that you have more than. Is that what you're saying, Kathy Brown? I always meet guys that I have more of it. Like, what the fuck? Am I reading this wrong? Hold on. A building nigga. Yeah, it's a lot of building niggas out here. It don't work. If the nigga ain't built, with this the key. If he don't have all that he... It's tax time, PP81, not booming. Yeah, that's probably right. If he don't have everything that he should have when he get with you, especially if you over 30, you don't have the time to be building no nigga. If he in college, that's the building a nigga stage. If he's not in college, you don't try to go. No woman can afford to be with a building nigga. You can't. You outside of your dating pool if you messing with people that you got to build up. If he ain't got no job, he ain't got no house, he ain't got no car, you don't need to be dealing with him. Ain't no way that you he, he should move in with you and he ain't paying no bills for a whole year. That's crazy. What the fuck do you have a man for? Althea said cheating had to go. Tell him to finish cooking and come back when he get these done. Mm -hmm. Sorry, niggas. Yeah. He will sell anybody out who will listen to him. Oh, my God. The only way, Ghost finally got somebody to cheer him on. Because everything Delano is saying is what Ghost was trying to get me to say, what he was trying to get Shane to say, what he was trying to get people to say, to try to applaud his great works that he does. Ghost never done him to repeat what that's a damn lie ghost did a lot more and i i can't speak for ghosts and i'm not gonna speak for ghosts but i can say this if it wasn't for ghosts a lot of the shit that keith was doing that was positive he wouldn't he probably wouldn't have been doing it that's all i could say about that situation and furthermore he gave him a blueprint on what family is because keith was spending time with ghost and his family and Ghost was encouraging Keith to reunite with people like me and try to mend things with his mom initially. When I saw him, the, the time when I was riding my bike, he stopped me. He didn't have to do that and said, look, we want you. You need to be on board. You need to be. I didn't know him from a can of paint, but I respected what he did. He didn't have to do none of that. And this was prior to him leaving. And I'm going to say this. He has been a main source of my sustainability. Me and him talking about some of the things that we talked about. Me and him talking about Keith. This is a, this is a real brotherhood. If anything, if Keith didn't have a brother in me, he had it in Ghost. Now, I couldn't tolerate Keith on a lot of things because it was a lot of things that Keith did that I just couldn't I couldn't get involved in. It wasn't because I'm just this perfect guy and I'm this holier than thou type of dude. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. I'm not even that way. That's a terrible. My, my mom could not give you a. No, there, you couldn't put no credence on anything that my mom says about me because my mom do not know me. Point blank, period. I know my kids. You don't know us. You don't know us at all. Down to the kid. I offered to pay him. He didn't want it. That's what a friend should do. But a friend don't try to put your but how did he do that like he did he didn't do nothing disrespectful nothing at all you had already put him online 
you talking about a friend should do it, a mama shouldn't do it. You shouldn't have put him online. When I told everybody, I said, y'all don't want to see him. I said that. I was like, you, you don't want to see him. I told people didn't understand because they thought that I didn't see him. I did see him. I was watching him on my phone. They didn't know that uh, Shay came out and said it. That she didn't even know how I got it. They gave it to everybody else, but they never gave me access to it, but I still got it. Notice how I be having stuff and they don't be knowing it. That's God. That's God. They don't even be knowing I be having stuff. They don't know that I see Keith. They be they be thinking that they hide Keith or they that I don't know where my mom. I know exactly where my mom lives. Did y'all catch that though? She said that his friend shouldn't have put him out, but you put him out. You put him out on, in the public. And what you don't think Bigo don't move like that, bro? You gave the picture to Tommy K. Tommy K had the picture. And when she seen the picture, when she seen Keith, she already knew. A lot of people were saying this, but this is true. Tommy K know Keith ain't coming back. Tommy K already know that. Tommy K wouldn't have put the shit that Tommy K. Listen, let me tell you something. Tommy K, she thinks she's slick, but she not slick. She couldn't wait to get out of that family. She couldn't wait. But the, she had to build her base. Because if you notice how she moved, you could tell that that was her intention. Because when she left, she dogged ghosts. Shay, she dogged several people when she left. It wasn't that like she left and she left on good terms. She left and she was doing shit that y'all already know that Keith wouldn't tolerate. But somebody had came to my, a lot of people quietly was sending me a lot of shit. And I had conversed with several people and I said, well, look, I said, check this out. If we get Tommy K out the way, where's the people go go? Where's the people go go? A lot of people is invested heavily into that app. I had a young lady come on here and talk about how it was so addictive. She just could not get up. She compromised her relationship with God being in that environment and she and it, it still is a struggle for her to not be in that environment people is willing to uh sabotage their soul to be involved in some of this messy mess that's real that's crazy Regina hates that ghost is still connected to, to you. She wants all cords cut. So she that's exactly what she wanted. But moreover than that, if you think about this too, everybody that had a strong connection to Keith, she's trying to disband. She wants to be the end all be all to Keith. She don't want no interruption in her connection with Keith. That's what was difficult. You know what I seen that night on December 24th? What I seen that night? She had to come to grips that Keith loved Shay. She had to come to grips with it. She was so upset that Shay had to be called over there and that that man would not leave. It, it was so difficult for her that night because she came to the realization that I got to deal with this. Help. Listen. She can't, it's not so, Shay, it's not so much, it's you. It's what you represent to Keith. The love and affection that Keith has for you. That's, she's envious. 
What I seen that night was envy. I didn't see love. I seen envy. You yelled at his kids. I had to console his kids and take them to the basement. Y'all come downstairs. Because she shouted when they came in the door. Don't bring them in here. That's what she said to his kids. Then she come on here and try to act like, oh, I had a conversation with God and I know I didn't do right. And these kids ain't buying it. And look at Tommy K. She's so ill-informed. She don't care. She go butter it up. At one time, you were sitting up here. Oh, she she's right for doing that. She I would have put them out and I would have did. Now she said that she was wrong. Oh, yeah. Well, let's let's bring them back. If you're out there, make sure you call Miss Regent. Call your grandmother. But you and Nunu was putting out the campaign for uh, that's what grandmamas do. Now all of a sudden your tone changed once Regina changed. Because y'all don't need, you don't need, you trying to gauge her. Because yesterday, the day before she came out with the interview, Miss Regina don't want to have nothing to do it. Miss Regina says she ain't going to do nothing about it. Miss Regina going to leave him alone. Miss Regina, Miss Regina, Miss Regina, how did she have such a change of heart? I guarantee it was some of the shit that she was putting in her head. I guarantee you that. Let's get Don Trail. Let's get him to come out here and lie. He sound like that's that's you can't trust nobody that need a place to stay. That nigga will say anything. He not credible. Who who gonna trust somebody? You a lying nigga like that or nigga? Yeah, that nigga lying. Don't laugh at me, Miss Brown. Somebody pray for me. Kevin, could I email you? I need to show you something. Go ahead. You got my email? It's loaded up. That reckless with they own motherfucking life. No, yeah. People taking people out here taking penitentiary chances just to be out here lying. Oh, let me put it out here. Please don't send me no news of Keith. I do not want to see another nude of my brother. Please keep all nudes to yourself. Not interested. There you go. Benoni did break that down real good. I like what she said. A lot of people came up and, I, and, and they said some, I listened to it today. I didn't get a chance to hear it because you know I'm working, right? I don't know if I'm making all this big, fast money like she talking about. Why am I going to work every day? Why don't Regina show P? That's what I said. I don't know. I just don't understand why she don't. I don't know, but I guarantee you this. Noni said that it wasn't humble people. I'm not concerned about the people that um, it just uses stuff for content. We know it's going to be people out here. That's just a platform that, that they have over there. It's going to be people, but it's really people that care about Keith and it's people that <clears throat> I feel that this is a life lesson. This is not just a Jones family situation. This is a life lesson. There's so many lessons being learned from this situation. I At first, I had uh, it, it used to drive me crazy, some of this stuff, until I realized that a lot of people was watching this outside of Vigo. A lot of people are sending me emails and saying uh, a lot of different things that I'm I'm. It is is a very inspiring thing. Very inspiring. And I don't know if anybody, I don't, I've never even heard of a situation like this ever in my life. I've never seen two people that's family members, mother and son, that's in the public and going after 
going back and forth about uh, uh, something like this. I don't think it registers with a lot of people what's going on because you don't think of your mom like that. You don't think of a, of a, it, I don't, I don't, I, I would say that I wouldn't even think of a woman being like that. Not until I got to be an adult and I seen some of the stuff. Well, I got a terrible ex and that's took me through a lot of shit, but she's not worse than my mom. I think my mom is the worst woman that I have ever met in my life. Them facts. If she wasn't my mom, I wouldn't have. I don't, that's why I can't really blame these young ladies for not dealing with her because, you know, for, for you to deal with that kind of personality, I think people shun people like that. The only attention that she could get is the attention. If you think about it, the only admiration or attention that she could get is from having somebody like Keith, having this kind of individual with this kind of following and support. That's the only kind of way that that kind of personality would draw people to them because she's just such a difficult person. I've never known her to sustain a healthy relationship with anyone. Never. Never. So th this is really her moment to say, because prior to this, she wasn't talking to my uncles. She nobody got along with her. Me and Keith didn't get there. It was sporadic, but it's it's conflicting emotional messages with me and because you don't expect your mom to be like that. Nobody expects their mother to be envious towards their women, right? To be a tail bearer and to be going out here doing mothers generally. When you think of a mother, you don't think of a mother being a person that even, even with his bad mothers out here, it's a lot. It's some bad mothers out here. It's some bad mothers out here. But generally, when you think about a mother, you don't you don't even think about mothers being like that. So I'm fighting against that in the public. I'm fighting against that perception of mother because so when people talk about mothers, be, mothers, really, mothers in this country, in our families can do no wrong. There was a mother that killed a little girl. She filmed her and she was um, she was asking her, why you not why you not saying hello to me or something? It was a little black girl that got killed by her mother. It was it, it was the sad one of the saddest things that I ever seen. But I saw the look on that baby's face and she was concerned. She was concerned about something. That baby was concerned about something. She knew that something she was she was being abused by that woman. But it was her mama. The girl, the, the baby ended up getting killed by her mama. And just to think a child with that much vulnerable, being vulnerable, a cute little girl to very cute little girl. And she was kind of petrified of her mom. She was petrified of her mom, but she went, still wanted to say hello. And that mother killed. Yeah, she put her in the freezer. Sad as is the demon mother who put her her kids in the freezer. Yeah, it's a cup. But when we think about mothers, we don't think about mothers being that way. So this is a unconventional situation. I even got some backlash earlier, in when I came out on my Instagram because people, are, how you talk about your mama like that? How you do this to your mom? Because they thinking in terms of what they are to their mother or what their mother is to them. And they couldn't conceive a mother being like this. 
But if you look at it for what it is instead of what you perceive it to be, that's what I say uh, The where reality, where, where perception meets reality. If you look at, if you could take your mind off the perception and you can look at reality for what you, you can clearly see is something wrong here. And why would a son or daughter not fight out against this? It's easy for you to sit on the sidelines and say, yeah, I wouldn't do this in public. I wouldn't do that in public. This is an outcry for help in so many ways. This woman is, she's hell bent on support because that's the only reason why she's talking to Tommy K. Tommy K, if this was, some, if this was something that was so important to Tommy K, Tommy K would not be collecting no gifts, no beans, no nothing if it was about her brother. And I shamed her and she's fighting against me solely because she wants to dig de she wants to destroy my character, right? By using my mother as because if Miss Regina never came out, she could not say anything. Right? If Miss Regina was not speaking about me, Tommy K couldn't have her on here. Just think about that. So that's what she, she's doing. Tommy K is using this demonic energy to fuel what she started from the very beginning was her takeover. Somebody came out here and they said, it seemed funny to me that after Keith's accident, she bought a new house, got new furniture, got liposuction, got all this and got all that. After, will we see who, who, who benefits more with Keith being down? In fact, the person who has benefited more than anybody in this situation, out of myself, out of Miss Regina, out of Uncle Buki, out of uh, uh, Ghost, out of Shay, is Tommy K. Tommy K has benefited. She benefits more from this situation than anybody in this situation. And you always follow the money when it comes to Bigo. Whatever storyline can be created, and this is a tragic situation. And she's ill-informed. When a person is not connected emotionally to a situation, they can, they can do this kind of stuff. Because a lot of people is going against their conscience to believe this woman is involved to this degree. Well, why is she ain't got what is the purpose in her having a man's mama come out here and speak against a man? Why is this dislike for me? Like as if I'm doing something. Yeah, I am doing something. I'm hurting her bottom line. I'm hurting her ability to create the content because we already see what Tommy K do out here. Tommy K is not a great host, broadcaster. She's not. Her content is not relevant if it's not pertaining to Keith. It's not. That's why she goes uh, going to different, lining different people and going over here and going over there. She's all over the place. And when that don't work, and the bottom line is not being met. The first thing she do is go and grab Miss Regina. And that's what she's doing. That's what it is. This is about money. Miss Regina with Pastor P81. And the 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 it's like the record, it's like uh Death Row and Tupac. Tupac wasn't making more money than Suge Knight because Suge Knight represented Death Row, the company. He'll give you a car every. Go in here and get the keys. Go get the keys to that uh, Rolls Rolls Royce. That's in his name. 
That's what she doing. That's what she doing. She the kind of person that looks at the big picture, the overall picture. And in her picture, she has a connection to Keith. And that connection is monetarily, financially. It's not based on brotherhood. It's not her undivided attention towards uh, what uh, 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 on his family and his friends and things like this. Because you came out here talking against Shay, you did that before. Then now you want to come out and attack ghosts. Everybody you try, you and my mom, and you using my mom to do that because she has hate in her heart. How can the love of God be in you? And you got all that hate in your heart and people can see how hateful you are just by you coming out. If you were smart, you never would have came out and said anything about me. If you were smart, then you could probably possibly get away with a lot of stuff. But now you didn't paint yourself in the corner. Now you didn't put yourself in the corner now. And Tommy K got herself in the pickle because that's her only topic. She wanted to speak about me. She come over here and watch me all day. I don't care when I come on. I don't pay attention to him, but she know every video that I got out. Every video that I got. And he said this and he said that, but I thought you weren't watching me. Like, which one is it? Bottom line. That, that was the third time. The first time he did it, I gave him grace. The second time he did it, I gave him grace. The third time, you're out. Yeah. And if you notice, because I've been looking at these videos, because I don't really look at it, mm -hmm. the whole time... I, I've been looking at these videos, but I don't really look. See, Lord have mercy. Yeah, people go tear this shit apart when they hear it. you talk on both sides of your neck. You don't, you don't, you can't keep you, all your words are unseasoned. They fall to the ground because you you really kill everything that you say with your own voice. You come out. I really I I don't watch it, but I watch it. So you killed that. You shouldn't even say that whole thing right there. You you just wasted talking right there. Stay one way. I watch it. That, but they say a double-minded man is unstable in all their ways. And look, she unstable. He was playing dominoes with Keith. That video, Ghost had to put it out. Oh. Either Ghost did it, somebody in that little clip did it. Just like the young lady that was calling me about Keith's baby, she was so polite. She was sound so very professional on the phone. And the only thing I said was, who are you? Well, how do I know who you are? I, I got the tech. And so I'm not going to subject my son to anyone who I don't know. Mm -hmm. So find out who you are if you legit. And just like I told her, if you about the right thing, I support you 100%. Mm -hmm. But listen, she didn't pregnant that girl. Right. I was trying to do her a favor. Yeah. But since she lied to me. How are you trying to do her a favor? All she's trying to do is verify whether that's Keith's son or not. You're not do you're doing yourself a favor because that's your grandchild. And why wouldn't you want to know that? She just wanted a DNA test. What's the problem with that? Absolutely nothing wrong with that. But you sensationalize this situation and you allow Tommy K to come in and infiltrate once again and tell you what to do about this situation. Like she go just include herself in. No, I think that she uh I need to be a third party involved in this and let me mediate me. No. More content, more money. She's trying to build more content. He told me I'm not on social media. I don't get down with them. Yeah, I know Dale, but we ain't friends like that. I, and then I'm like, then I hear she on his live, but she talking about these. After I, and, I, and that's why I, I text her, messy, messy. And see, I'm not gonna get caught up in nobody mess. Now, if it was so important for her to know who her baby daddy is, I opened the door for her. 
Look, she opened a, she opened the door for everybody and slam it right in their fucking face. How is you opening the door for everybody and nobody's walking in? Nobody's doing everybody. How do you open the door when you got Tommy K standing behind it? Well, that's cool. Well, that's cool. We'll let him see the people that he want to see unaided without your uh, involvement. If you're going to take that kind of mindset, I, okay, that's fine. But let let him decide what he wants to do in this situation with, it, with the people that love him. See, you want to choose and pick when the right time is for him to, to have discretion over his own matters because by default, you just saying I you 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 know that he's not going to be in a position whereas he could do it. So you gonna say, well, I'll just let him make the decision. I'll let him make the decision. So this young this young child ain't gonna know who who his dad is because you that's easy. Just let him let her. What do that have to do with the op though? That's what I'm trying to figure out. Why? What do it, do it make a difference if she talked to Dale and anybody else? It shouldn't make no difference if it's just about a DNA test. It's not about nothing else but a DNA test. I don't get that. That's stupid. That's crazy. Who gives money? He will figure all mm-hmm. that out. Mm-hmm. I am done with all of that. All of that. My house is at, I have peace now. Hey, nobody bother me. I just didn't like the fact that he's trying to say, like, cause a doctrinal sexuality. Mm-hmm. I got him around these, you know, doctrinal. And have you ever seen him naked? Never. That's a lie. But it's my responsibility as his mother to make sure he is got the best things around him. And it was more so because. They'll do whatever they can to try to get keep away. You hear what Delano said. Yeah. You hear how he threatened. All of the lies he spewed. Like that's it. It's a lot going on. And, and, and I don't even have the energy to be involved with Kevin on any level. Mm-hmm. I'm to the point now where I don't even want to be in the same space as he's in. Mm-hmm. And now she's trying to now now look at what she do her tactic is now she wanna now she's saying now the family she never said that before she's acting like the whole family is against me see how she's how she tried to spin this situation like she like the whole family is with her they're not trust me that they're not even the people that's around her they they are not they are not. They have asked her on several occasions to stop talking to me. She's not going to do that because she's getting support from Pastor P81 and she's supporting Tommy K and Tommy K is supporting her. That's the dig. You heard Tommy K said that she was sending money to Keith. So if she's supporting Tommy, if, if Tommy K is sending some kind of support, they're just greasing each other's palms. That's all it is. That she, but the person that's getting the most out of this situation is Tommy K. Without it, without a doubt, she's getting more than anybody is getting in this situation. She is. Tommy K is. She don't. We want to see your re- receipts on what you get. That's why you try to go out here and do other things to make it seem like this. My kind did this. What I do, I go out here. But your main attraction every single month. Since this Keith thing is Keith, nobody else is listening to anything else that you put out, Harley. Go, I want to go and get those videos when she's talking about me or she's talking about Keith or she's talking about Miss Regina. 
She's getting more attention. She knows where her bread is buttered. Them is facts. Go look at the views. Go look at the times when she come out because it's strategic. When she comes out with the content for Miss Regina. Go back and look how many times that they, and Truth Teller always record when she on with Miss Regina. She He got all the videos when she come, ever since that he joined uh, with power, with the powers that be over there and, and uh at the time with the time cats. She figures he'll take over. Yeah, not Shay, not me. Nobody's on social media except him. Yeah. Continue it. That's not true. And if you ain't watching everybody, how you know who on social media? Tommy K on social media. Tommy K is who bringing you on social media. You ain't got no YouTube. You ain't got no Bigo. When people come to sit down and listen to you, they come and sit down and listen to you through on Tommy K and Truth Tellers platform. Mostly Tommy K. With her YouTube creator, her YouTube person, which is a truth teller. When this drama, talking about everybody in the family, my mom, his aunt, you know, his brother, his children. Mm -hmm. how, how many times have you discussed? His because you coming out here and lying and telling these people lies. Miss Regina. So I come out here with receipts to validate the shit that you not validating with truth. You come out here and the spoken word is your receipt. You and Tommy K trip me out every time y'all ask for receipts. I'm just looking like, damn, well, what have y'all put out here? Everybody always say the same. Thing, like, what, where's y'all receipts? You don't have no right. Everybody else bringing their receipts in. You ain't got your receipt. Where's your receipt, ma'am? No, he ain't got his receipt. You stand in line. Everybody got their receipt. You ain't got your receipt. Well, he ain't got his. He, he, he. Where's the receipt for this? And you ain't got no receipts. You ain't bring a receipt six. We ain't got a proper Pastor P81 receipt or statement at all since its inception. We don't know what you buying over there. Uh, I was in the mall one time with my wife and I saw an old buddy of mine that I went to school with. And I said this not too long ago. He said, hey, bro, the first thing he did, came up, gave me five, hugged me and said, I just seen your mom up here. You at the mall. You going out. You at fashion shows. You said you seen ghosts out there. Let's talk about them receipts that you got. And all this from a person, if you say, oh, well, well, uh, she can go to the mall. She can go out. She can go. Yeah, but she ain't got a job. I got a job. I got a job. You want to know where that, how I bought that TV and that bed? It's on my, it's on, I, I, I spent it on my USAA account. I got that. I got the receipts for that. That came out of my money. And I ain't go, what the hell I got to keep on showing receipts for and y'all ain't showing nothing. I showed the receipt from the phones. I showed them. I've been showed them. If you go back and look at the videos instead of recapping and just cutting it off and going to something that you want to go, because a lot of people there listen to my video for a minute, then cut it off, go back to something else. When you cut it off, that's probably when you miss the receipts. 
Because half the time when I'm on there, I'm dogging your ass, Tommy K. So you cut it off. You don't want your people to hear me cutting into your ass. And you don't want to be a laughing stock to your own people. So you cut me off and go to another video. Just like you did with that video when I was talking about my, my wife's kids on there. You cut my video off. Then you went to a video that you could stir up some shit with. Because you knew I was cutting into your ass. That's what you do. You think you slick. They go hear it. They go laugh at you. Trust me, somebody holding their mouth laughing at you every time I get on there and say something about your fat ass. Don't even worry about it. children spend more and time in the bonnet you you for a person that's always got all this money you wear more bonnets than my grandmothers do my grandmother could put some curling irons and get them curling irons and crispy and that hot comb and get their hair done and ain't walk around all day with no damn bonnet on before you and you wear wigs you spending all this money on weave and wigs and all this shit, and you spend more time with a bonnet on. My grandmother ain't spent, and she hardly had no hair. She ain't wear the, these women ain't listen. Them women back in the day knew how to have some respect for themselves. They ain't walk around all day like that. Got you a man, and you walk around in a bonnet all day, and then when you leave, you got your hair going right. Get your shit together. This, that's why the man want to go out to the bar and hang out. He want to see something decent. He sit around here all day with you on the couch, funking up with them long ass farts on the couch, talking all that dumb ass shit to people that you don't even know and getting in folk business. I know that phone hot. Spit all on that phone. All you do is sit on that. You didn't tag this change the screen. You got screen protectors, not because your car, your phone go fall on the ground or something. You got it from all that spit you got on there. Funky hot breath. You didn't he heat it up the damn. You know, heating up your damn screen. Melting phones. Know your breath stank. All the shit you told. All the beans you eat. Man, want to come out there and see something deep. Don't want to see no woman walk around with no damn bonnet on all day. Just be ashamed of yourself. My grandmother had more decency and respect. Get up, put on something. You were in your nightgown all day with a bonnet on. Filthy. Think you go cut your back and people go, hey, that, that ain't going to help you take that bonnet off your head, comb your hair. You gotta get them, get them moving on the damn hot combs and stuff. Put some rollers in your hair. Do something. It's a shame. Ain't nothing but a man. Niggas come out here, got their hair laid out. Guys who's come out here with makeup on, hair, hair laid out, different color. You come out here with a bonnet on. You should be ashamed of yourself. Just nasty. All the women to shame you. No damn well you don't know. You ain't got no damn sense as it is. You a, you a better, you a bigger man than, than Carrie wherever be. You the head nigga in charge. We know it. You ain't fooling nobody. Walk around with no bonnet on. My grandmother be a sh Take that bonnet off. Go get you some. Rollers and put something in your hair. Quit having that glue pulling out all your hair. Nasty. Then want to sit up and eat all day. Girl, you just got to cut all that fat off your back and you coming up in here. Trying to suck on another bone. Put the bone down. Hold your peace. Sitting around here talking about somebody else. Whole man in the house. 
I'd be drinking myself to death too if I was him. They can't come home and get a proper woman. Got to sit up here wondering, wishing he could have somebody. That's why he at the bar. That's why he at the bar. I'd be at the bar too every day. Just a drinking, drunk. You talking about me drinking. Yo, and your man down there, drunk as a skunk. Got to walk in, got to see this bonnet 24-7. Hot ass mouth. Know your breath stay. I ain't seen you have a, a, where's your toothbrush? No, you ain't got the proper toothbrush. People enjoy the entertainment of lies and drama. Yes, he go. Look, they are lies. going to continue to reel him in. Lies. Mm-hmm. And, that's, and that's what he wants. He has a narcissistic Look. Hey. Look, she that's all she do. Uh-huh. That's she, that's her cue. She ain't even in the screen. Look, you can only see her bonnet. That's it. And then her taking intermediate drinks. You see a ceiling fan, uh 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 part of a ceiling, and a little piece of her head, and the drink cup going up every now and again, and her hitting her cue. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Look, greedy. That's what he drinking. Drinking. If you know anything about uh, Nessa, uh, what's she drinking? Nessa, the American, the Bible. She don't even know what she's talking about. The woman don't even know what she talking. I told you she don't know the Bible. She come in here talking about something she don't even know nothing about. She don't know nothing about. He lost sense of reason. Let me skip this because oh. I don't want to hear it. She don't, she don't know what she's talking about. He's so good at manipulating because he knows the word of God. But guess who else knew the word of God? Hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. Step mm-hmm. right at God's foot. Mm-hmm. He knew it. But what did he do? He took a 30-year-old virgin and he put her in his hands. Mm-hmm. Look. That's real hate right there. When somebody, this ain't the first time my mom has called me the devil, bro. My mom has called me the devil on many different occasions. I got, I got all your text messages. I was gonna put them out. I'm gonna spare people because you you write too much. But she, this ain't the first time she called me a devil. A long time ago, I remember. I could tell this story. I remember I used to wait on my dad to come when I was a kid. We stayed on Fulton. I used to wait on my dad. This is the first time my mom called me a devil. I was a kid. And I waited on my dad to come. And I used to wait on my dad to come and get me and pick me up. My mom looked at me when I was a kid and said, look at this devil waiting on his daddy to come. That's what she said to me as a kid. I never forget that. I never forget you. You remember when we stayed on Fulton when you was with Carlton Carter, the drug dealer? Why you up here talking about my woman? You didn't have I don't know how many drug dealers, gang bangers, all that. Sitting up here talking about people. Mm-hmm. She did. You know how I many people then jumped on my mom and I didn't got out the bed and, and in the middle of the night and got out and jumped on these niggas when I was a kid. I don't know why you sit up here and tell these people, hey, he don't fight no men. He, he just fight. I was jumping on niggas when you was getting your ass beat. What you talking about? When I was a kid, I was jumping on niggas. You, everybody know me for getting on it. Everybody know me. What, you don't know that? How can you not know that? When Keith couldn't even defend nobody, I was defending your ass. Getting up in the middle of the night and seeing my mom getting jumped on by people and I'm jumping on these niggas like I'm, I'm fighting niggas. That's that's real spit. That's that's gospel right there. Then you come out here and you tell me, you tell 
all the niggas that did jumped on you and I didn't got up when I was a kid. You gonna tell these people that you ain't never you ask that nigga that that you talking to that that's my my baby my, my wife's ex. Hey, ask that go. You see how you see how big he is. Do you see how big he is? That nigga never got out the car when he seen me get out the car. I got out the car. I got the pictures to prove it. I was meeting him up at Trailby Park. He told me to come out there. He didn't think I was going to come out here. Oh, I'm coming out there. I was out there. He pulled up. Hold on. Hold on. Hey, babe. Come here. I don't know why this woman called sitting up here trying to act like I'm no chump or I'm a punk or something. What's wrong? Now, you know your ex tried to meet up with me, right? Yeah. Now, didn't, didn't I go to Trailby Park when he told me to come out there? Tell 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 these people. They, they, they don't know how you don't know you don't know me, Miss Regina. Because if you did, you would know you won't. First of all, he tried to meet up with you. He y'all end up meeting at Trailby Park. You went out. You was in the middle of the park. I was in the middle of the park. You had your hands up. He was driving. On the phone. He was creeping, driving. Uh -huh. When he seen you, he turned around. He turned around. Then the other incident was, y'all was downtown. We was downtown. You literally walked over to the To car. his car. He wouldn't come out the he car. He wouldn't come out the car. The next incident was when we was down at court. Yeah, oh, yeah. You I forgot about him. that. You called him. He was like, caught him a bitch. He was like, boy, he didn't do nothing. He went down there. Is he was in fear for his life. To the deputies, crying to the deputy. Because you were saying stuff. Yeah, that's what we do around here. We have we about that smoke. We about that smoke. How many times did Keith come over to my house during that time when we was there? Well, after that incident, babe. Didn't Keith come to my my house a oh, couple so of times? A couple of times. Well, wasn't everybody? Wasn't me and old Jason all of them over there too when he came over there on his bike? On his new bike, the bike he got an accident with. Did you see him being uh, uh, aggressive like he was on the phone that day when we talked? He didn't you do was that. there. He didn't do none of that. He was. He didn't do yeah. none of that. I, I don't know what she's talking about. I don't know what you talking. You don't know me, obviously. Do you don't know nothing about me. I ain't. I'm not afraid. Of, what am I gonna be afraid of? If you get your ass beat, you get your ass beat. But I, I guarantee you ain't gonna want to fight me. And I fight dirty. I'm just letting y'all know that. I fight dirty. I'm trying to pull out your eyeballs. I'm trying to hit you with a brick if I can. I'm trying to take some teeth out your mouth. I'm doing something to try to hurt you so that you will think twice before you ever speak on me again. I am going to try. I'm gonna fight dirty. I'm gonna kick you in the balls. I'm gonna knee you. I'm gonna elbow you in the back of your head. I'm gonna cheat. I'm a cheat and don't let me, because me and Keith, we do this. Don't let us get close because if we get close, I'm not trying to talk to you. If I see you, I'm not trying to talk to you. We're not going to talk if I see you. If you step out the car, there is that that's right. It ain't no rules. I'm just letting you know. I'm trying to hurt you. I'm trying to hurt you, and I'm not going to stop. Someone else is going to have to stop me. You don't want them problems. I'm just trying to tell you. I don't play by the rules when, when there ain't no rules out here. I'm going to kick you in your dick. I'm going to punch you in your eye. I'm going to try to pull. If you have dreads, I'm going to try to drag you by your dreads. I'm going to try to pull them out. I'm going to try to bite you. I'm going to try to do everything to let you know that this is going to be a fight that you ain't going to want to do again. I ain't going to bite down trip. I had to put a condom on before I fight him. I ain't doing it. I put a whole body condom on, then I fight some. Some of them people, I ain't going to, I ain't going to, no. Yes, I, Junie, yes, that's how I get down. If I get too close, don't let me get too close because I'm trying. I'm while you talking, I'm gonna try to sneak and hit you right in your mouth. I'm one of them kind of like uh Krishan Rock kind of people. Like I'm gonna sneak up and try to do something to you. So I'm just letting you know what I do. So if you could deal with that dumb problems, then you good. 
There's a chance you can make it out of that. You can be good. You can be good with one ball. You'll be okay with one eye. Charleston White got one eye. He, he, you'll be all right. Mm-hmm. Oh, I fight dirty. I fight dirty. Ain't no sexuality when you fighting. Oh no, I ain't. It's sexuality in the bed. It ain't no sexuality when you fight. You gonna lose some balls. You love your balls. You don't want to fight me then. All women get get you a good hit in the nuts. You all women is capable of winning the fight. Don't, that little shit don't mean shit. If he got some balls. I'm just playing. But I'm serious. I'm playing, but I'm serious. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. 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 And, and she's the one that got Now we got the good. Now we got the good stuff. Now, okay, she said I'm walking around with a boom box. Let me show y'all this boom box that I got. I got two of them. I'm gonna cam up real quick. Hold on. Let me show you this boom box I got. Right. She said, "Now this was a complete lie." She act like I'm walking around here like, uh, Radio Raheem. I was in my car. My 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 radio was. I'm in the hood. I'm on Scottwood. I'm in the hood going to get my brother, my, my cousin Endo. I got my this this radio. Let me show you. This is the radio right here. This is the radio right. I got two of these. Right. I got two of them. Let me show you this real quick. This is the radio that she say that I I uh was walking around with. Now, this radio is heavy as fuck. This is the radio. See this radio? See how much it costs? I got this exact same radio. I got it up here. This is what this is what I play my music on when I come on live. This right here. This is a dope. If you want a a, a, a radio, you get this one. This is a good one. It's loud. It's a good radio. That's the kind of radio. Now this is the radio that I got. Yeah, I love music, but I had it in my car because. I was going to, I I take it to work with me sometimes, right? So when we want to listen to music, I got, I got, everybody, I am the DJ where I'm at. The boom box took me all the way out. Yeah, but I wasn't, she trying to make it seem like I'm walking down the street. I need two slices. See? This one, she make up anything, y'all. She make up anything. Hold up. Let me show y'all this radio. Now, first of all, this radio is heavy as fuck. Anybody that know anything about this radio, let me, hold on. Let me drop this down real quick. Let me show you this radio. Mm Mm-hmm. Hold on. So this is the radio right here. If you can see it on here. Now, mind you, this this is a heavy ass radio. This is heavy. She think I'm walking around here like this. She think I'm walking around here like this with this radio. Walking down the street. It was in my car. It was a different one. It was the one that I showed you. This is the one. That's in this room that I keep in here. Or I got one in the basement that I keep down. The one that I keep in my I am not walking around with this big ass radio. Clock it. 
Who walk around with this big ass radio? <sighs> Just lying. This is the picture I was gonna show y'all. Uh, me and uh my grandmother Josephine. This is Josephine. This is me and my this is Josephine, me and my mom. I'm in the middle. Josephine, this one she came out to California. That's Miss Josephine. That's me and my mom. That's a big ass radio, ain't it, Lisa? She knows she's lying. She knows she's lying. <laughs> she just lying. She she'll do anything to make me sound. Yeah, this that is a boom box. It's a called a flare eight boom box. And sometimes I took it. I was in the hood, so I didn't want to keep it in the car. I didn't want to keep it in the car, so I took it inside with me. And now she's saying, I'm Radio Raheem. He walking around here carrying a, a boom box. Shut up. I don't even know what you're talking about. I know he, he, but I don't, I ain't got time to get caught up. Look, I'm going to leave you with this one thing. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. will not continue the drama with him. Absolutely. As far as I'm concerned, my responsibility is to keep my eyes focused on the things God is doing in my life. Which is not and to take care of the key. Mm -hmm. What I don't like is this who's supposed to be his brother's keeper, mm -hmm. the one out here glorifying those who despise him. Yes. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. he, he glorifies everyone who Thank despises you, him. He say Uncle Buki took care, was over there helping. Uncle Buki only Trail back there sounded like uh, uh, uh Jangalang. I don't like the fact that a lot of people see we as a family see. all know that this is what he does, and then we That's can't Jangalang. Even now. Jangalang was gay too. To he was with Biscuit. Because <laughs> he knows that what he's doing is wrong. That's nice funny, mister. All of us begin to hold him accountable. I'm gonna let him come and enjoy himself, but I'm gonna stay away. Look, see, mm -hmm. uh, all of us. All of us? Who is us? Staying away out of his presence, out of his sight. He can keep talking, keep bringing up lies from the past. I ain't oh, talking one lie. Act, my mom stole my money. They was my beneficiaries. She did. Oh, I need John Jones for this one. Hold on. She said, hold on. Run that back. Hold on. Keep talking. Keep bringing up lies from the past. Oh, when I was in Iraq, my mom stole my money. They was my beneficiaries. Why would I come out here and say that if it wasn't true? Hold on. Let me call my daddy. Death like my daddy. It's only so few people you could count on that's going to tell the truth. Hold on. Fact check. Come on, Daddy, answer the phone. He probably busy doing something. My dad, no, because I called my dad and I told my dad that I couldn't get it. No, let me tell you, I there's no way if I could put details to this. Yeah, I'd be lying. The reason why me and my mom's relationship is fucked up, too, is because I said it. She had my power of attorney when I was in Iraq, and she took my money. She had my power of attorney. She had access to my bank accounts, everything. What's the name of it, Kevin? Uh, What, what you talking about, the radio brand? Uh, It's called Boombox. Uh, Bump Box. B U M P B O X X. Yep. 
It's a nice radio. I wish I could call my daddy. Oh, I'm sorry, Miss Brown. Yeah, I'll call my dad. Well, uh, I can't call my mom. So we even to some. I mean, moms is better than dads. Moms is better than dads now. So we in the same boat, literally. Hold up. Oh yeah. So she lied right here. This this is actually true. I this is one of the um things that I wanted to talk about too. Um to clear this up too. She did steal my money. She did. She did steal my money. And she stole a lot of money. And that it was a pivotal time in my life. Actually, when I was over in Iraq, we had an eight hours difference and we had to stand in line. I think a lot of people that, that was in Iraq, I was stationed in LSA Anaconda in 2004 to 2006. Okay. I was very popular for sports on that base as well as me being uh, becoming a non-commissioned officer. I was very popular on there. I won the slam dunk contest when I was there. Um, so I was very popular and I was very popular in my battalion because I had this situation going on at home that a lot of people knew about, which was my money being taken by my mom. I called my dad and I told my dad that I couldn't get in contact with my mom. So I told him to check my bank account because I wanted to go and get some stuff from the, the PX when I was out there. And I, because I didn't, I, I had to, you get a month, you get a stipend from your money every time you get paid. So I got a certain amount of money before the money went into my account and I was able to go and use it for certain things. Well, I had went over the amount cause I bought some things that uh, I probably spent a little bit more money. So I contacted my mom to get, try to call her to get you know, see where, how I could get some more money. She never answered. Now to try to make, to fast track this, what happened was when you call back at home in Iraq, you had to stand in line, right? Because everybody out there is trying to contact their significant others or their parents or people that, uh, that they, um, they, uh, it's called B B U M. B U M P B O X X. That's what it's called. She stole key money too. Yeah, but listen to this story. That deployment money is a lot, and that is heartbreaking. Yes, it is a lot of money. It was a lot of money, a, a lot of money. And I was a non-commissioned officer, so I was getting paid monthly, and I was getting hazardous pay, combat pay. I was getting all kind of money from being out there. <clears throat> but when you go out there, only as soldiers know, they, they know what I'm talking about when I talk. There was AT&T facilities where you had to go in and you had you had to long. The line is long during peak hours when you could call back home. So the line you had to literally if you in there and you get off the phone and you hang up the phone and there's people in there watching like, oh, yeah, I see you off the phone. You got to go back out because other people wanted to come in and use the phone. So you had to go all the way back and uh, go to the end of the line and come and wait till you get your turn to go into to the AT&T AT Center. So what happened was I tried to call my mom with my first call. She never answered the phone. I snuck and I was able to call again. She never answered the phone. So somebody saw me and they told me, you got to go, Sarge, you got to go back out. Damn. So I go back out. I got to call my dad because I wanted, I can't get in touch with my mom. So I gave him my information. I'm like, dad, call my bank and see how much money I got in my account because I'm trying to get something now. I can't get it. I'm like, well, I, ain't, I don't understand it. So this is what happened. I got back in line, waited, called him, asked him to do it. They kicked me out again. I had to go out after I gave him the information. Then I called him back. He said, son, I got to tell you something. I said, what? He said, 
you don't have no money, son. Said it's supposed to be like ten thousand dollars in that account, Dad. He said you owe three hundred and fifty-five dollars in your checkings account, and you owe two hundred and fifty dollars in your savings account. I'm sorry, son. I said. The reason why it made me mad was because of this. I be prior to me going to Iraq. I was struggling. I was in college. And I was struggling and I was doing uh, I, I was doing uh, I had just joined the I had just joined uh, um, the the Army National Guard for my last couple of years and I'm going to school I'm struggling and I decided because to to leave everything in Ohio and I actually weigh my rights um to be uh in the net in the National Guard so I can go full time I decided that life was so bad at that time that I was willing to go to war when everybody was running away from war. I went to war. I went to Iraq because my shit at home was all fucked up and I didn't get no help. So it pissed me off when I'm in war. I had, I showed everybody where I put my brother and my mother as my, my uh, beneficiaries on my life insurance policy. I get over there and this woman took all my money. Not to mention after I came home from war, nobody showed up to uh uh like when you come home, like I met the mayor, I met no, I met the governor when I when our battalion came home, I met everybody, and I just wasn't even excited to see nobody because my family wasn't there. At this time, every my grandmother, both grandmothers was alive, my aunts was alive. Everybody was alive. Nobody showed up when I came home from war. Not even my mom. And I didn't have a place to stay. But when Keith got out of prison, when Keith got out of prison, Keith had an apartment furnished, lights on, Everything from yours truly, Miss Regina. Now here she didn't stole my money when I was over in war. Barely was able to recover. I stayed with my aunt for a minute before I went off on my own and started doing what I what I did and got myself together. But when Keith got out of prison, this is what she didn't say. She got this man an apartment. That's where she met him. Thanks. Thanks, uh, Jeanette. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah. So why she's saying that uh, uh, Keith never needed this and that. If he didn't need it, it was because you made sure he had what he needed when he got out. You even told me that he, he didn't even pay all the bills that was in your name over there at that place. Don't worry about me feeling slighted about this situation, everybody, because let me tell you this. I've already been through this with my mom before. And she loves to glory when people need her. That's what she loves. And she got out here and lied and talked about uh, how... Uh, I always needed people and Keith was a hustler. If Keith was a hustler, why he have an apartment and I had to get it out the mud when I came home after you just stole my money and you so eloquently lied on here and told these people that you didn't take my money when you know you did. That was the turning point in our relationship. 
and you know it. So if anybody is out here lying and have something to lie for, it's definitely you. I got a job. I was doing quite well before I started, before I started take, what was I doing prior? This is another thing. When they come out here and talk about, well, he trying to get all his money from his brother. What was I doing prior to, uh, say, P419? I feel bad for the truth without family. Yeah, I did too. I was one of them, them, them people, Red. That was me. You wouldn't imagine all the people I deployed with people who came home to no money. Yep, me too. I was one of them people. When I came home for r and &R, I was supposed to go to Dubai. I had to come back home because I didn't have no money. She used up all the money then. I ain't had no money when I ask any soldier in here. Don't they got R and R? When you during war, you can come, you got two weeks to go wherever you want to go. You could go to Dubai, you could go home, you could go any you that's your your period of time that you got before you got to return back to the base of where a, a record. Yeah, I ain't had nothing when I came. When I came back from R and R, I ain't had not. I I just knew when I got home, I was go. I'm because when you get that break from being in war, you be wanting to go and do something like you want. When I came back, I wanted to do. I want. I was just dreaming of this time for me to come back home and do all kind of. Man, I ain't got. I came home if it wasn't for my uncle Buki. He rented me a a brand new Mustang, and I went to Detroit. I stayed at his house for a little bit. Then I went to Detroit. I was I was kicking it. Shout out to Detroit women because y'all are some crazy women in Detroit. Some crazy women in Detroit. But yeah, uh, if it wasn't for my uncle Buki during that time, I wouldn't have had, I wouldn't have even enjoy my R and R because I didn't have shit when I came home. Then I had to go back. To Iraq, going back to a war—that's that's the worst feeling ever. Leaving a war to come home, and and you broke, then you got to go back out there again. It was, and everybody know about hurry up and wait. Everybody know that if you in the military, that's the you got to have the most patience ever in the military. Let me tell you, Red know what I'm talking about. My mom stole my money and she got on here and lied and said she didn't steal it. She did. She's a liar. She lied right in front of everybody. She know. And the thing is, she knows she did it. She knows she did it. Why would I come out here and say this stuff if it didn't happen? Do you think she anticipates you dying over there? I don't know. But if she if I did, if I died over there, she would have got four hundred thousand dollars the next day. Keith said in his video, he she stole it. She stole what? I think Keith probably spoke on it. It's a video that he did. I wanted to find it. I can't find this video for nothing. I told you. I told you. What? Oh, so Keith lying too now, Miss Regina. This is sad. My 21 year old is in South Korea now. I don't touch his money at all. And that's a special kind of person. Because when I didn't hear a lot of story, I didn't hear people's wives cheating. We used to have grown men coming in crying. What the fuck is wrong with you, soldier? My wife then ran off with somebody. She online sleeping with somebody and showing her husband that she's sleeping with the dude, right? I couldn't believe it. That we talking about grown big ass men coming in here crying over shit that's going. You can't think about, bro. You can't think about what's going on at home. You gotta keep your mind in theater. If you start half the people that get messed up over there is because people be focus on what's going on at home and that's that's tragic because these people gotta 
obey commands and orders and shit like this. And if you mad about your wife sleeping with somebody, you can do anything out there. You got we got people with guns everywhere out there. You couldn't even go. You couldn't even go to the cafeteria unless you had your weapon. I remember I got stuck outside with and I tried to go to the cafeteria. I'm thinking, I'm OK, I'm a sergeant. They gonna let me in. Uh, sergeant, you got to go back home. You got to go back to your trailers and go get your weapon. You got to go back to your trailer and get your weapon. I'm like, why? Everybody else, I'm just going to give me something to eat. I'm I'm trying to tell you, we're not letting you in. Go back and get your weapon. I'm like, this so dumb as fuck. So this when I first got out there. But then I seen why. You know why you had to have your weapon everywhere you went? Because they had coalition forces out here. They had Iraqi local national people coming on our base. And these are local Iraqis that's coming out here and on the base. I got stuck one night and I had to take a bus back to my trailers. And I'm just like, hey, man, come on, man. Just open up the door so I can go back home. I don't care who in that train, this this bus. I don't, just let me in. Take me back over here. I get on there and I'm looking around. I'm looking around like these niggas don't look like niggas. They don't even look like Americans. I'm in the bus full of Iraqi people. It's full of Iraqi people on this bus. I got on the wrong fucking bus and everybody is looking at me and somebody had the nerve say, uh, uh, do you know Tupac? But he said in a way that I couldn't understand because of his language. I was like, what's who say? To what? And somebody with better English said, no, he asking you, do you know Tupac? No, I don't know Tupac. No, Tupac been dead, man. <laughs> Tupac, they think of black men as as uh, entertainers, rappers, and stuff. They that the whole world thinks that ain't nothing but niggas over here rapping and doing all it. They think we know every we know uh, rappers and shit. They asking me about Tupac and he dead. Have you ever seen San Francisco? Yes, I've been to San Francisco. Where is it? Is it made of gold? The bridge? No, it's it's called the Golden Gate Bridge, but it's not. They was like kids asking questions about America. And I'm sitting here with my weapon. I got my weapon now. And I'm just looking like, I see why they told us we got to have our weapons. I ain't know these niggas out. I ain't know they had these people out here like this. Yeah, they had the foreigners and I didn't know it. But anyway, the witch stole my money and she came up here and lied. She knows she's lying. Okay. Yeah, he's been talking a lot. Look, she, okay. That's what she say. Not about his father being in his life and he's Listen, and I ain't here to put his business mm -hmm. on. But his she said she not here to put my business out, but she putting out everything that she, that well, it's really not my business because most of it is lies. So I, it is my business, but it's not my business because it's lies. And this is one of the, this is a bigger, even bigger lie. Daddy ain't never been in his life. Wow. This, Daddy. this is a flat out lie. That's a flat out lie. I've lived with my dad, dad several times. I lived with my dad several times. She sent me, when she kept Keith out in California, she sent me to live with my dad when my dad didn't have a place to stay. We were staying in the mission for a couple of days until he met a woman and then a white woman. Then he had, he took me to go and stay with this white woman that he met because he didn't have a place to stay. But my mom has sent me all the way from California to live with my dad. She denied it to this day. She forgot, totally forgot this. She literally, imagine you sending your son to be with your to be with his dad and you ain't even check out if he had a place. My dad literally did not have a place to stay. I had to go and stay with a white woman that I didn't know and her son until my aunt Nina and my uncle Freddie came up there to pick me up from Battle Creek, Michigan. How in the fuck would I get to Battle Creek, Michigan? 
What the fuck is in Battle Creek, Michigan, except for Kellogg's? Kellogg's. That's where they make Kellogg cereal in Battle Creek, Michigan. She lying. I stayed with my mom. I mean, with my dad. On several different. I stayed with him on the east side. She lying. Just a flat out lie. The only reason why I went, I went to the same, I went to the same high school that my dad went to my sophomore year because of my dad. He got a big ass statue. He got a big ass uh, picture. I used to go to Scott where Keith graduated from. But every time I went to that gym, I saw that damn picture and I'm like, damn. Every time I come in here, I got to see this nigga up, up, up here on this. And this is my dad. Hey, man, you look just like this dude. That's my dad. You know this guy? Right? That's my dad. So now, see, this is why I say context clues. She stayed with my, with my dad's mom's family, with my dad's family. She didn't stay with hers. So that means what I said about her was true. Because why did you leave your family to go stay with my dad's family? And you say that they supportive of you. They don't like you. They tolerate you, but Brenda, Brenda could not stand you. Newsflash, she didn't like you. I y'all can believe this or y'all don't have to believe this, but I'm gonna tell I'm gonna say this. Because she lying right here, too. I was I was with my grandmother when she passed. Uh, she had stomach cancer and the doctor prior to, I was one of the last people that spoke to her on the bed while she was getting ready. I, now with hindsight, uh, just maybe a couple of hours later, she would pass in her, in her bed, in her home. But I was with her and I used to go upstairs and because she, 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 she was, that was my, my great, the, that was, besides my wife, that's the greatest woman that I've ever had in my life is, is my, my dad's mother. We have pictures together. Um, and you know what she told me? This on her dying bed. I know you love your mother, but don't, don't trust your mom. That's what she said to me. That's one of the last things my grandmother said to me. All of us packed up because we was tired. We've been over there the whole day and they had called and told us that she could go any day. This was like a couple of weeks ago. She said, hey, she can go. The doctors, listen, the doctors was on it with this one. Because they, when we left, the doctor called and said, she, she, she might be passing sometime soon. Y'all need to get over there. After, after I had that conversation with her that I just said. Right? She died before we got back over there. To, to see her. She died in her bed. That was one of the last, one of the last things that she was saying to me was don't trust my mom. That's what she said. Her sister Neen can't couldn't stand her. 
she had wished death on her daughter. This is the shit that Miss Regina. Now she's not gonna come out here and say that, but this is what she did. She said she wished death on her daughter. Her daughter passed. My aunt Nene's daughter passed. She never forgave my mom. Today that she died, she didn't want to have nothing to do with mom. That's her sister. She didn't want to have shit to do with her at all. Everybody was talking that kumbaya shit. She couldn't stand her guts. She was done. And she always used to tell me and Nene was like, she was the second best woman that, that I ever had in my life. I mean, well, I say top three. My wife is. She, she but my aunt Nene, I don't know if Keith ever talked to her, Pastor Pete ever talked about her, but she was a, a real big person in this family. And she kind of reminded me of Ed. That's how she was. She was a hustler, though. She was a hustler. Okay. So, yeah. <clears throat> and Neen was the lady. Real talk. Hustler. She'll pull a gun out of, on you in a minute. But she couldn't stand Miss Regina at all. She couldn't stand her. She couldn't stand her guts. She spoke about her daughter that died and passed. Chrissy passed. And she couldn't stand her ass. That was till the day that she died. That's real talk. And she act just like it. That's if Keith could come up, because I didn't know who Ed was. Her personality is just like that. And she'll shoot a nigga in a minute. But she loved me. Notice everybody that loved me couldn't stand her. They couldn't stand her. But that's my mama. That's how and and and, and then he was on their heads too. She used to set people up in gambling spots. She had she had had people rob her own gambling spot and go out in the back door and and split the money with the robbers. She used to come in. She got me one time. She used to come in. She. She had asked me for change for a hundred. She gave me a fake hundred dollar bill one one time, but I let it go. That was my girl. But she used to set my ass up too. How you think Keith got so good at some of the setup? We had some of the, some of the people in our family some crazy, shiesty motherfuckers, bro. That's where Keith did that 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 set them up. Get get. People entangled in shit, learning people's personalities and finding something to try to cut your ass down with. Keith learned that from the family. Joking, dancing, music, we all been doing that. We've been, all of us do that shit. Oh, you trying to be like Pastor Pete? Well, you ain't even know me. How the fuck you gonna try to say I try to be like somebody when you didn't even know me? I don't, I don't, I don't care for Pastor Pete. I don't like his arrogance, his ego. I don't like that. I don't like that. I don't like some of the things that, so how am I going to try to be somebody that I I don't like that? I don't like when you talk about people's women or do, and I ain't saying what nobody else do. That's what they do. I don't know that, but if they did that, I wouldn't like them either. I just don't believe that shit. That's not how I operate. So I said that I couldn't be a part of that bullshit. And you can't do nothing but respect that at the end of the day. Damn, I done broke my motherfucking butt. 
ain't trying to be like no damn Pastor P. That's what they, oh, you trying to take his people. That's why Tommy mad. She think that, oh, you loyal supporters of Kevin over there. No. They loyal supporters of what's, and what's giving receipts and what's really helping out. Y'all motherfuckers ain't helping out. Y'all ain't giving, y'all had the opportunity to take care of his kids. Y'all didn't. Y'all neglected that. All the mistakes that y'all made, y'all projecting y'all energy and hate towards me because I exposed you by what I was doing. When y'all didn't pay the water bill, I did. When y'all weren't taking care of the kids, I did. You should be out here thanking me because why would anybody go against somebody that's supporting the person that you call brother? And I'm getting money from the so-called ops. Like you said, you should be happy. Why would you not want him to get no support? Because it shames you. Because you can't say nothing to them and you can't make, you can't build your base because you can't say all these motherfuckers just out here hating on Keith and blah, blah, blah. When they taking care of his kids, when they helping take care of his kids, that's why y'all hate me. Y'all hate me because I came out here and I wouldn't go fight against a nigga that I don't know and I'm not going to try to protect the nigga that I do to a limited degree. I'm not going to come out here and support wrong. I don't care if it's my brother or not. That's integrity. That's morals. You seen Jeffrey Dahmer's mama come out here and his daddy come out here and try to plead the case for his son. They son. I wouldn't have. You eating niggas. You eating niggas and I'm going to come out here. That's my son. No, you wrong. You wrong. My brother come out here and talk about kids. You wrong. I don't support that. Pulling up on people's mama. You wrong. I don't support that. I get out here and support somebody saying something. To, I'm going to put myself in. You listen, you talk about somebody's kids all you want to. You don't think God taking a note on that? Tommy K didn't come out here and talk about people's kids. And the whole justice is they talked about me. They talked about my kids. They do. Okay, that's cool. God go get you and God go get them too. You ain't out of it. All I need is God up there tallying up on stuff on me. And then you see your daughter out on, on the news getting wrestled and taken down by uh, the police. See that? You don't think God got just weights and balances? Keep doing what you're doing. I bet you I'll be able to outlast you more than you'll be able to outlast me because your righteousness ain't going to prove you out. You ain't got none. At the end of the day, your works going to have to be manifest. He said, what you sow, you reap. Or you reap what you sow. Sooner than you sow, later than you sow. Sometimes it comes late for people that's wicked. Hold on. I got it. Hold on, hold on. Just go separate. Let me let me deal with this. Yeah, so if you wrong, you wrong. And I don't believe in people speaking on things like that. I don't. Whether it's my brother, my mother, my cousins, nobody. You ain't gonna never hear me come out here and be speaking about nobody's kids and being disrespectful. I ain't speak about Tommy K. I'm just saying, you, 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 your daughter came out here and she was online. See that? Speak about people. Do you think that Regina shows your videos to keep to make him go against you? He may. She may. But I don't think that, I don't think that I don't, I'm not saying nothing that my brother won't know that I'll 
people don't know our relationship. Even Miss Regina don't. She alluded to some of the things that she thinks he know. But I've always kept my brother accountable for the things that he did. That's you know who you ain't gonna want to be around when you're doing something wrong. Somebody that's telling you right. Why don't alcoholics hang around church people? Why don't uh, junkies hang around uh, uh, people that's going to college? It just don't match. I mean, his lifestyles is different. Morals are different, and you only people want to be around people that they that are like minded. They don't want to be around people that's that's telling, look, man, maybe you should think about that. No, look at this lame ass nigga. He always got something to say. You always ruining our fun, nigga. Lame ass nigga always got something to say. Corn boy ass nigga always got something to say. That's what they go look at you like when you're telling them right until they get in the situation. See, because Tommy got that coming. She don't think she think that she go get out unscathed and she go go out drinking and having fun and just, you know, enjoying herself. And she throwing all this bad stuff out here. They, they call it karma. I call it a sin. And this is the a big one. Because you getting involved, you trying to separate families that you people that you don't even know. You don't even know this man. Now his son is going to be deprived. His son or whatever you want to say. A young man is going to be deprived of having the opportunity because Tommy K is putting herself in the middle of something that she ain't got no business putting herself in the middle of. That ain't got nothing. And we don't hear nothing about her family. Why mom is sitting up here telling me to interview my wife's kids, have her interview her family. Why she interviewing my mama? You go and interview your own family. Let's see your family. Why we don't know where your mama is? Why we don't know nothing about your family? Okay, yeah, I'm going to look at that too. We don't know nothing about your family, but you come out here talking about everybody and receipt. We want receipts from you. They say you a foster child. That's what hurt people do. Hurt other people because you don't know how to do nothing else. And you hurt and keep. They think you out here to besmirchify my accomplishments and to destroy the junk. No, you destroying the person that you say you have an affection for and that you so concerned about because Miss Regina didn't tell you that she came to my house looking for me. She told my family that. She came to my house looking for me with Keith because Keith asked for me when she been telling everybody that Keith don't ask for me. Then what you come to my house for? You said you seen some white people on the white white people on the porch. You know why? Because they live there. They live there. My house ain't gonna be that junky. You know that. My house is always clean. Miss Brown, I asked because of the malicious ways that she has. Facts, her biological mother and family. Yeah, don't nobody know. She's like, uh, nobody knows anything about she. Somebody go pull up them files, bro. Oh, that shit go all come out. Watch, 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 y'all. Watch. I'm going to pull out, I'm going to put out a prophecy. And I'm going to say that you go find out soon who Tommy K and her family really is. Because she has fluffed and deflected for so long and got herself and too easy to talk about other people's kids and other people's situation. Yeah, we've seen the stuff that you said about other broadcasts. No need to name anybody. But we've seen you do that. But your day go come. 
Your day go come. Grandmother would actually be flipping in her grave. No, she wouldn't. You know? No, she wouldn't. She would be flipping in her grave if she if she hear what you said about her grandson. And you know that Brenda Woods roll for her grandson. This man right here, that woman roll for me. Remember when you took me over there and I had a diaper rash and they got on your ass about that? You got in a fight with the whole uh, Woods clan over there because you brought me over there with a diaper rash and they got on your ass. Why you sitting up here lying? Them people don't care for you. They think you crazy too. My uncle Daryl is on my dad's side. Not on Keith. That's not his uncle. He know him. He know my uncle Daryl. He know John. She been letting him smoke weed since his accident. I'm sure she have. She's sitting up here lying. Oh, I know. I'm, I'm who? What? It's not good for him to smoke no weed. Now, people will say all these technical medical bullshit that they say about drugs and things of that nature, but it's not going to do Keith no good to be doing something like that. It's not. It's not. It's just not for so many reasons. Knowing that this is what he has become. Mm -hmm. Because one thing he says he thinks that he has always been the golden child, the golden grandchild, because nobody ever knew his wrongdoings. Mm. What's my wrongdoings? I had keys to everybody's house, literally everybody's house. My Uncle Buki's house, my Anine's house. I had keys to their house. You could never get that access with none of them people. And Cindy... My girl, you hate her. I love Aunt Cindy. I stopped talking to Aunt Cindy some time ago, but I still love my Aunt Cindy. She's the oldest sister, and she's very, she's nothing, she's the antithesis of what Miss of what Regina is. Total antithesis. And she hate her guts. When she asked, asked Kevin about Jason. I don't, you don't have to ask, Jason ain't go, what Jason go say about me? Jason used to come and party at my house. Jason's son stayed at my house. That's my nephew. I took care of him. Helped him get through high school. He can't say nothing. My brother Jason can't say shit about me. Nothing. He has thanked me several times for me bringing him, him and his son back together. It was an incident that happened between the two of them. I had him go in my backyard when they weren't talking. I said, y'all need to talk this out. You you definitely don't want to talk, but you talk to Aunt Cindy. Let's see what Aunt Cindy think about you and what you think about Aunt Cindy. Bring that up. She ain't gonna bring it up. <laughs> Played by Satan, and he's slowly mm -hmm. opening that can door and box. Mm -hmm. And I've been telling everybody, y'all don't know him like I do. I had him. Mm -hmm. Don't nobody know their child better than me. Mm -hmm. That's the problem. I'm not your child. I'm your son. That's a difference. A child is codependent on a parent. I'm independent. I have a wife. I don't need to be on no no tit milk. So let's get that understood. I don't owe you nothing. Nothing at all. And neither do Keith. Nobody knows their child. He's sitting all the, all these people getting worked up, uh, calling me this bad person. And they don't have a clue who I am. Do you really think I'm going to entertain any of that? No. You sure are doing a good job of it, though. 
Absolutely, Absolutely not. not. You are doing Absolutely amazing with Keith. Absolutely mm-hmm. not. And the reason he cannot tell y'all nothing is because he don't know nothing. Absolutely. If I don't know nothing, why is everything that I'm saying check out? I knew about Don Trail. I knew about keep being at the cemetery. I knew I had the camera when you thought I didn't have the camera at Keith. And I still got a whole bunch of videos on my phone that I've never even showed anybody. The only person who saw even one of them was Ghost. It's been a whole bunch of lies you've been coming out here saying, I didn't know, I didn't know, I didn't know. Then why is people coming to me if I didn't know? People can't. The reason people came to me is because I knew what was going on with Keith that y'all didn't tell nobody. And a lot of people started going away from y'all because y'all went, it was meant, go back and look at all the theories that they had about what was going on with Keith. Keith this, Keith, he probably over there doing, he this, did that. I don't know. I don't know. It was so many different people coming out saying all kinds of stuff. And I'm watching, I'm like, What? Who is, who is these people? What? What? I saw when I went back and looked at all the people and all the shit that they were saying, he could have been this. It, it sounded like a whole bunch of conspiracy theories. Guess who wiped that shit out? Kevin Jones. I fucked a lot of people's bag up when I came out because they couldn't push that shit no more. They was mad as fuck when I came out. They called me a op when I came out. He coming out and he's saying too much stuff. Why would people be uh, get mad because I'm saying too much stuff if I wasn't telling the truth? They was getting mad because I was coming out here saying shit. And then guess why they was getting mad? Because they were saying he's trying to take he trying to take them people. That's what they've been concerned with. They was concerned about them gifters and them supporters. That's the same thing. That's the reason why Tommy mad. Now, Tommy didn't say nothing. She didn't say nothing initially. She didn't know me to say anything. She said that herself. She didn't know nothing to say anything about me. Keith ain't got no brother. KLB. Yado. That's his brother. Remember, KOB was the first one that came out and said something. He's the one that came out and said something. And that's when they got on my radar. And look at me nine months later. That's why they mad. They mad because they couldn't run the game on y'all. They wanted to own that brand, Pastor P, and they wanted it uninhibited because they was going to shake y'all motherfucking chains loose. They was about to shake y'all loose. Until I came out, and then when I came out, that's when everybody got mad. Why else would I be an op? It didn't t- look the spoken word made me an op. The truth made me an op. That's all it was. Oh, this nigga coming, he telling Eric, man, we ain't gonna be able to say nothing no more. We are, we done. This nigga out here talking. Why you why you talking? I thought we said we I thought we said we were look, they was going with that gimmick. Corn, that's when I can't, yeah, corn on the cob, yeah. I made that. I made that up. And I said it from the very beginning when I was talking about uh what's his name? Uh the 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 pastor that uh he just recently died too. Um what was his name? They made a movie about him. But I said it back then and I was telling the truth. The money is not a secret. Why is his health? 
Facts. Them bars right there, TV killer. The money is not a secret. Why is his health? Exactly. And guess who? He not over here. He with them. And then they lying. Carlton Pearson. Yep. That's what his name was. Pier Pearson. Yep. Tommy so invested just like what I said. Tommy, they wanted to build their brand around the Pastor P thing because Pastor P had a lot of supporters and they wanted to worm their way to those supporters. They were selling bumper stickers. They were selling all kind of shit, hoodies and t-shirts and all kind of bullshit that they were selling. It fucked up they bag. The truth fucked up they bag because they had the plan. They wasn't going to say nothing to me. When KOB, KOB came out here and he made a mistake and they got, I'm sure behind the scenes, they got on KOB and said, man, don't even say nothing to that nigga. That nigga ain't, nigga, we, uh, we about to get this money. Pastor P gone. We got it, y'all. Don't, don't. Don't say nothing to him. Don't fuck with him. He ain't, that's family. Leave, leave the nigga alone. But once Tommy K left, then it was no hoes bars. Notice all that bullshit. When she came out against me, it's after she left. She couldn't stay in that environment and do the shit that she doing now. She couldn't do it because Keith rules wouldn't allow for that shit to happen. Too many people will find out that bullshit and be like, no, this ain't how Pastor P, you heard a lot of people saying, no, this ain't, initially people was saying, that's not how Pastor P moved, he wouldn't do it, he wouldn't do that, he wouldn't do this, he wouldn't do that, and so she couldn't deal with that, that was the pressure she was getting, it wasn't the people, it was the pressure from Pastor P's philosophies that was hurting her and suppressing her, so she had to get out that environment, and once she did, she talked about ghosts. She talked about Shay. She talked about a whole bunch of people. Then she got brazen and stepped it up when she had the support of Miss Regina and she could talk about me and she could make content from me. And Miss Regina was not just decisive, divisive to her son. She was divisive to keeps lover and to his best friend and those the two people that she was into that that tommy k was into it she didn't need them no more they was interfering with the play because they was getting money once she moved them two out the way she didn't need no intermediate source she had to, she had the plug she turned into the plug that had the plug because her goals was always to be where she is now. And she was going to be a succubus to everybody and get all that information and know all the little shit. That's why people mad at her to this day. That's what she do. And she just played the game right. I've seen why Keith did deal with her. And he had a couple of run-ins with her, a couple, a couple of disagreements with her. I watched these videos. She knew what she was doing. You got to respect a woman that could survive in this kind of fucking environment and to do the shit that she did, but she unscrupulous, and that's why she going to get fucked up. That's why she going to get fucked up. Because when you take on this P brand, it, it come with a lot of shit on its shoulders. Even when... The P, when you take on Pastor P, why you think I didn't go to Big O? Every people, everybody would have been charged to get on my ass if I went to Big O. Not that I mind, but I just couldn't, I didn't, it, it's an integrity thing because I can't support everything that Pastor P done. As far as the entertainer and a comedian, his dancing, his singing, People didn't place no value on a lot of that stuff until now. But the stuff that they really loved him for 
was the mess. That's what they loved him for. Because the mess in Big O is what brings the bill, the, what pays the bills. Some of these people would be good God-fearing people if they wasn't attached to that act in that way. Because now they can't go back. Once you get so far into that, you can't go back. And that's what they attach these black people to this for. The, the, the black section is all messy shit. And we ain't attacking nobody else. We attacking each other. Them just facts. We good at fucking each other up. That's what we good at. When it comes to dealing with these motherfuckers, that's more sophisticated. We can't, we, we you, you, you got to be educated. You got to be articulate. You have to be meticulous. You have to really be willing to be persecuted, suffer jail for doing the right thing. It's going to be a lot. People, I just be messy. It's better to fuck with your own next door neighbor than to fuck with somebody that stay in the suburbs. Notice that you don't never go to these motherfuckers, white, white people's neighborhoods and fuck up their shit because they always got ordinances and laws and shit. That prohibits you to even be out certain times. You can't, you couldn't put no graffiti over there if you wanted to, because you can't be out past a certain time over there. You can't cut your grass at a certain time. There's certain shit you just can't do. But in the hood, everything goes. So we can fuck up this shit easy because there ain't no stipulations over here. See, Miss Regina can fuck up her own family because she's been doing this so good for the last couple of years that don't know only people that's going to fuck with Miss Regina is the people that don't know her. Everybody else in the family, if they're dealing with my mom right now, the census is we ain't going to see Keith if we, if we don't do good. They scared. They scared. They petrified. We ain't going to see Keith if you, if and, and she know that you can't have her like that. Leave her the fuck alone. She gonna need help. Dry her ass out. She gonna need help. Now she realize. Notice it when everybody leaves. That's when she started wanting to be family, but she don't want to be family to me. She don't want to be. She want to get. Now these people probably did worse things to. I ain't never did anything. You, mom, have my mom ever got on here and said I stole anything from her? No. Notice that. She ain't never said none of that shit. She ain't never said nothing. You ain't heard me come on here and, bla and blast her like keep. I And no time in anything that I have done has it been worse or equal to what Keith did to her in that video. But she coming out here like I'm her greatest enemy. Talked about my kids. Talked about lied. Talked about my wife lying. Speaking about things that she don't know, have no knowledge of. No firsthand knowledge. She's over there and she's talking to her ex. That's what she's do, do, doing. She, they told, they told us that she still, his kid told that he's still, she's still talking to my wife's ex. Why? Why would your mom be talking to your ex? I don't think y'all picked this up either. She was talking to my ex-wife and have been. When my ex-wife called and we went back and forth on Facebook just recently with some bullshit she put up here. Like, what the fuck you talk? I ain't talked to you in five years. What the fuck you talk? Yeah, your mama told me about you. Yeah, that's what it is. Why is she talking to? Why is she talking to my ex? Still. Why?
that's what you got to think of. Like this, when you consider that information right there I just gave you, you will know this woman is hell bent on trying to destroy me because I'm fucking up the potential for her support. That's why she keep on talking about money. We're prove that I'm making all this money that you say I'm making from Pastor P from uh Save Key 419. And you don't have no reason to come out here and talk about no money when you haven't even produced no receipts, Miss Regina. You haven't showed these people nothing that you said you was going to do. Now, I said that I was going to do it and I did it. You said you was going to do it and you didn't. Who the lie? Who's the lie? Who's the real liar? Oh, okay. Let me talk to my wife. I'm going to talk to y'all later.